first of all, I want to say this is a fantastic film. My God, this was a great movie. <laughs> uh, I got to start with the two of you have a unique job with this film and you kind of have to find some connection in sync. Was that difficult? How did you approach that? Starting with, I guess, Andrea, let's start with you. Um, it took years. It, it, it took years and it, and it wasn't, um, it didn't sort of start externally. I think it started more psychologically, the conversations. Um, and we were, both of us attached to this, Chris was attached to this first and then, and then I um, shortly after, and we were both attached to it for a year and a half or two years before we actually made it. So we had a lot of time to, um, I suppose, get to know one another mm. in a sense. Um, although what we were trying to achieve was far more complex because we're trying to, we were trying to tell the story of an assassin who possesses somebody's physicality so entirely and perfectly that it's undetectable to those closest to her or them or whomever she's inhabiting. And then on top of that, that there's an internal struggle once this human has been possessed where the human psyche is bubbling up and attempting to, to fight the, the possession, you know? And, it, you know, it, it can get quite overwhelming. <laughs> I, I can imagine. <clears throat> well, it's Chris, especially, I think, for you, because you're kind of the, you're having to react off of this kind of, how difficult is that for you to process as an actor? Yeah, well, it's, again, I think, well, you know, you, you have the help of everyone, too, and you have the help of, like, you know, Andrea and Brandon too to kind of keep track of everything. But um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that one thing that we didn't want to do uh, was like kind of fall into the trap of like the audience constantly knowing that this person is being inhabited, right? Because mm -hmm. I think then it gets it gets a little silly at that point. So I mean, I think more the idea was to, is to kind of trick the audience and for have them forget at like in certain moments like who who's who's coming out right now, yeah. you know, and, and then and then only in only in certain specific moments, you like you'll get glimpses of Voss, you know, in in a very clear way when when no one else around Colin's character is watching, you know, when when if there's a moment of respite for Voss, then that's when you know, and then whenever there's anyone else around to kind of slip back into kind of acting, you know, as as the person. So I mean, it's just I think it's a incredibly fun exercise to kind of do day in day out. How is Brandon to work with as because visually he's kind of amazing. Uh, how is he to work with as an actor? Is he super uh, connective? Does he chime in a lot or does he kind of let you guys step step in? Sorry, I guess continue with you, Chris. I got you on screen. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean he's uh, he's he's very specific. Like he knows. Uh, he knows the world and every that that's what I really appreciate. He knows exactly what he wants. Um, and but he's also not precious about um, even his own writing or or you know, he's very open to collaboration. And like and that's you know, and I think uh, you know, I, not to speak for Andrew and I, but I think he was in a, in a sense he was lucky with <laughs> with us because you know, sometimes you don't want actors input and i get that like sometimes it's stupid um but uh i think that you know i think that we 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 all had this really nice kind of open collaboration and all kind of brought brought things to the table and you know that's what makes it kind of interesting and fun and Andrea, it, yeah. incredibly trusting just yeah. to say that he's incredibly trust brandon incredibly trusting and i think he casts people because he absolutely feels that he wants to know what they can bring to it you know well, I think specifically with you, Andrea, it's such a, it's such a morally complex character because you, you're, you have a family, you have this, without giving too much away because you cannot spoil this film, how do you find the, the levels of this char character and finding the moral ground, where whatever that moral ground she's standing on? I think that's just something that you have to, um, it's the first thing that you have to sort of throw out, really. You know, and playing it, you know, we live in a world where peacekeepers hold machine guns. I think in the 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 reality of 
there are many paid assassins in this world, right? And a lot of them have different job titles. Yeah. She's, uh, she's a, a gun for hire. And she's become so addicted to the annihilation, I think, of herself because of what she's done. And I, and I don't think that's a, a consciously moral um, question that she's grappling with. I think she's so, I think when we come to Voss in this film, she is so far beyond help. Yeah. In the sense that she, um, she only feels alive when ultimately there's death. Uh, and she's lost so many parts of her own psychology. And she now is this, you know, I said early, early on, I said to Brandon, I, I'm, I'm really just trying, this is when he first offered me the film. And I, I sort of hadn't, I hadn't said yes. I, we were just having a conversation. We were in Toronto, we were both at the Toronto Film Festival. And I said, I just, I'm trying to, I'm grappling to find a different job description that this, you know, that a different likeness other than she's exactly like an actor. Hmm. Except that she kills people. I mean, I tend, I tend not to assassinate people. <laughs> I don't know. You. <laughs> not in general, right? I, I not kill anyone, but, but, and he said, I wouldn't fight that. You know, this is exactly what she, she is. She's this, she's this, she possesses people and habits them for a time and then becomes, it can become very detached from who or where she is, hmm. if at all. Well, you guys, uh, this is a fantastic film, and we got to wrap it up. But honestly, it's one of my favorites of the year. I was, I was blown away by both of you and, and the film itself. So congratulations. Thanks so much. I can't pull the trigger. I need to know. I need to know what she's done to me. It's become a danger. Where is she? Sometimes that small thought is all it takes to lose control. Well, I guess uh, the first question I have for you is, it's been a while since you uh, you since antiviral why did it take so long and what was what why was this story the one that you wanted to tell to be honest it just took that long to get the film made I, you know it sometimes happens with independent films uh in my case also antiviral was my first film and i didn't have a career back then so when i finished it i really was starting from scratch i had to come up with another idea that i liked and, and i had to write it and develop it and then uh, the process of financing uh, the film took a while, which again is just a a typical independent film problem. Mm -hmm. It just happened to <laughs> to go on for a fairly long time in this case. Uh, well, this this film, where where was it? Where was the inception of this? Because it's such an interesting idea, and I've seen the, you know the body swap type thing, but not in this way. Where where did the story come from for you? To be honest, the story came from a fairly trivial personal place, which is that I was going through a strange period where a lot was in flux for me. And I was at a certain point having trouble seeing myself in my own life. I was waking up in the morning and feeling like I was sitting up into someone else's life and having to scramble to construct some kind of character who could operate in that context. And so I ended up wanting to write a film about someone who may or may not be an imposter in their own life. Uh, and uh, use it as a way to discuss how we build character and narrative in order to operate as human beings. So the seed for the film really is in those more dramatic, subtle scenes, and then the thriller sci-fi elements built out from there. Well, yeah, I think that's what's interesting about it. And I think we all, especially in this day and age, we're, we're seeing a lot of mental illness kind of creep into our, our daily lives w w around us on, online. I feel like that, in a way, you kind of do feel like you're losing your mind. That, that kind of sometimes we don't feel like we're ourselves. Did, was, what, was the time the, we're living in, did that play any a, a effect on this character in creating these two? 
Certainly. I mean, the intersection of technology and personality is completely fascinating right now and also impossible in a sense to get a handle on. I think we're kind of in, we're kind of a transitional generation and I don't think we really understand what humanity will be once all of the technology that is being developed now kind of settles in. For instance, uh, the death of privacy through technology was something I wanted to talk about because uh, the Snowden leaks happened during the writing process and I thought that was very terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at things like now, say the Russian influence on the US elections, uh, I think we're only just starting to realize what it is to be a completely online society and to in a sense be hackable because we're so influenced by the things that, that uh, we're doing and seeing online. That's incredibly meaningful, but also I don't think we have any sense of the, the true scope of uh, what that is yet. I would tend to agree with you. I think it, I feel we're so reliant on technology. Once that goes down, we're all like, ah, we don't know what to do. For sure. And, and technology is advancing at such an incredible rate right now. I mean, it's on the one hand, fascinating. I love technology and I, and I love everything that's happening. But on the other hand, it doesn't happen outside of us. It defines us in, in the same way that we define it. And yeah. uh, again, I, I think we're a transitional generation. I, I grew up before the internet was in anyone's home. You know, I, I got in just before the internet became really a thing. And I sometimes <laughs> think, okay, people will look back at me as being one of those weird born just before 1900s people who, who, <laughs> who didn't really know what they were getting into and didn't end up actually seeing uh, the effects of all of that technology that was being developed. Yeah. Now, one of the things that works so well for me with this film is the Yes, it is gruesome. I mean, there are some very specific moments, but it is a, it, it's a very specific thought pattern. And, and, and when the when the gore happens, when the gruesome scenes, and they're gruesome, but they they feel like there's a point. Well, how did you approach that those particular moments in the in a fairly grounded film? Well, because. Voss's relationship with violence is so much at the heart of her character and, and at the heart of the narrative. It was important to, first of all, be explicit about the violence. I think people had to feel it in a very visceral way just to understand her and to understand what she was going through, how it was shaping her. You know, in some ways, her character resembles one of those pilots, uh, drone pilots, who ends up with PTSD, even though they're not physically on the battlefield, but it's just. Uh, the experience of that violence is so destructive. Um, so when we approached it, as we approached many things in the film, it, because it's so subjective, we looked at how we could show the violence in some scenes in, for instance, more of an observational way, uh, in a faster, more brutal way, and then in other scenes, especially when she's remembering the violence, when it's kind of in her, it becomes the stylistic, uh, slow motion, impressionistic thing. Mm. You know, it, I definitely did get the sense that it was almost like a waking nightmare in a way. Uh, Andrea is phenomenal here. Uh, how difficult was it to decide to, to basically give her this kind of voice and give her this role? I, I was very eager to give her that voice and, and that role. And it was, it, it was interesting because she had seen antiviral and which I didn't realize and had liked it. So when we got together for our first meeting, I was there desperate to work with her thinking I was going to really have to work to convince her to be in the film. And then she showed up wanting to do the film and it was very, it was a very short, friendly, confusingly easy meeting because we both just wanted to do it. And, and I was thrilled because I, I think she was a fantastic actress. She is as, as well, Christopher, this is a great cast. The, really good. What was it difficult to kind of find? I guess put the two actors in sync because you kind of have to, I guess. Well, it was an interesting question. Early on, there was some discussion about process because I thought we would need some sort of 
f almost formal process that would allow us to have them both play the same character. So initially I was asking them, do, do they want to be on set with each other for each other's scenes? You know, does one of them want to be taking the lead essentially and the other one mimicking them and so on? And there was a little bit of kind of theoretical exploration that didn't end up having any bearing on the actual process. Well, we actually made it. I basically came to them with some ideas about how the characters would overlap. I had my own thoughts. They had their own thoughts and we discussed them. They also discussed with each other behind the scenes a bit uh, what Voss would do in certain circumstances. I know there was some just direct talk between them and then on set from scene to scene we would talk about it. And so it, after all that, it really just developed in a, a great organic way where we built it out together collaboratively. It feels very organic. And then you have Jennifer Jason Lee, who is just, I mean, she's always been phenomenal, but like, how, how did you get her involved? And I, I, I love this character. How, how did you approach her character? I was very eager to work with her simply because she's a great actress, but also she isn't an actress who I think you would normally expect in that role as written that character could be a little bit straight and boring and end up being a, a kind of throwaway uh, authority figure, which I didn't want. I wanted someone interesting to bring it to life. And she, that was one of her, uh, I won't say requirements, but something she said for early on is that she wanted to find a, a kind of interesting angle to that character and not play her too cool and not play her uh, in this really straight way, which was exactly why I wanted an actress like that. So a lot of, a, a lot of that stuff came from her, the, the sort of creams and the, you know, she, she wanted the stuff to be able to work with. And uh, I, I think she did a fantastic job. Well, I think you did too, man. This is a fantastic film. Thank you for making it. And, and I hope, I hope people see this. Like, I've been, I'm telling everyone I can, it's, it's, it's marvelous. So well, thank you, man. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, cheers, man. Good meeting you. You too. You too. <laughs> cheers, buddy. I can't pull the trigger. I need to know. I need to know what she's done to me. He's become a danger. Where is she? Come out or I'll do it! Sometimes, that small thought is all it takes to lose control. control.